after uh, the introduction, so I'll uh, be talking about homomorphic signatures. Um, so let me start by defining what is this primitive. Um, so at their high level, homomorphic signatures um, are like regular signature schemes, but they, in addition, they provide some control malleability mechanism. I mean, that works in the following sense. So assume that you have two users, Alice and Bob, and now Alice can use her secret key in order to sign a bunch of data sets, and these data sets can now be stored on some remote server, for example, and the uh, homomorphic property gives you the, um, that by using the, um, uh, so if the remote server has some function P, can compute P over the data set to get an output Y, and can, you can uh, run the evaluation algorithm of the homomorphic signature in order to get a signature on this uh, result Y. Um, and this is done by computing over the signature created by Alice. And finally, um, Bob, by using the uh, Alice's public key, can uh, check that Y is the correct output of, uh, um, obtained by computing P over data signed by Alice. So um, intuitively speaking, the security property of um, homomorphic signature says that if you don't have the secret key, the only thing you can do to compute signature is to use the uh, evaluation algorithm and nothing more. So in the, uh, the challenge in uh, realizing homomorphic signature schemes is that uh, we want to achieve this security property, but at the same time, we want short communication in the sense that uh, the size of the homomorphic signatures mu must be much uh, shorter than um, the size of the original data set. And the reason for such a constraint is that otherwise there is a trivial solution, which is I send you the, the, the signature on the, on the input and you basically do the computation and the verification on, on your own. Um, but to better understand this model, I would like to go um, more in the details. So in this model, a data set is actually consists of uh, um, some data set file name, which is, for instance, some binary string that you use to um, refer to the data set, and uh, um, a set of uh, pairs consisting of labels and messages. So the messages are the, message, are the values that you want to sign and over which you compute, and the labels are a meta information that you attach to um, each message. And for example, to be um, simple, a label can be just a position of the message in the data set. Um, so in this sense, Alice is going to sign this triple, so it's going to bind together the message and the, uh, the, um, and the labels. And um, the evaluation algorithm will operate over tables of messages. Um, and then to understand what does it mean to um, get correctness in this model, um, the key point is that the programs that you evaluate are uh, so-called label programs, so which basically is a, um, is a circuit in which each of the input wires gets some label. And in this sense, uh, what you are going to verify uh, by using the verification algorithm is that uh, you are feeding the circuit with inputs in the correct position. For instance, that you feed the input wire labeled by tau1 with the signature that was created with respect to label tau1. Okay, so this is the, um, the syntax of a morphic signature. So what is the um, security property that we consider? So this is modeled as a game that we want to model unforgeability. Um, and this is a game between an adversary and a challenger. So the adversary gets the, uh, the public key and then is allowed, as usual, to make signing queries on messages and labels of his choice. And at the end, it has to come up with a, uh, with a forgery. Um, the tricky part is to define what is a forgery in this model because, of course, the, um, the adversary can run the evaluation algorithm to compute honestly some uh, signatures. So a forgery in this model is essentially a tuple, a tuple that um, consisting of a data set, some program P and um, an output and a signature that of course it verifies correctly with respect to the verification algorithm. And then there are three cases that we have to consider. So the first case is the one in which the data set claimed by the adversary was never queried during the game. So basically this means that the adversary never saw a signature for that data set and it should not be able to come up with a signature on that data set. The second case is the one in which all the inputs of the, of the program that um, is claimed by the adversary were queried during the game, but the output is not the correct one. 
And third, um, the third one is the case in which the data set was queried, and, but some of the inputs of, of the program queried by the, uh, claimed by the adversary were not queried during the game. So it, it means that uh, some of these inputs are, are missing to the adversary, should not be able to come up with a uh, valid signature for such a program. Okay, so that's the uh, notion of homomorphic signature. So what do we know about um, realizing them? So this notion was first proposed by Johnson et al. at CTRSA 2002. Um, and only several years later, the application to um, securing network coding against pollution attacks rekindled the attention on, the, um, on homomorphic signatures. And there were several schemes that um, were um, working for uh, the case of linear functions. But and if we consider the case of functions more expressive than, um, than linear ones, there is only one scheme that we know that uh, was proposed by Bonin and Freeman at Europe in 2011. And this can support uh, constant degree polynomials, and it's based on, uh, um, it works over ideal lattice, and it's proven secure in the random oracle model. And uh, it's also worth mentioning that there was recent progress on um, homomorphic max, which is the secret key analog of this primitive. And um, in this case, we know constructions that are fully homomorphic or more efficient constructions that are somewhat homomorphic. And uh, finally, I also want to know that it's possible to construct homomorphic signatures by using succinct or interactive arguments of knowledge. But um, the issue is that if you want a fully fledged homomorphic signature, then this requires some less natural properties, such as uh, recursive composition of SNARKs and also due to um, some impossibility results in the area, you are likely to end up using uh, non-falsifiable assumptions. So uh, our starting point then was this scheme by uh, Bonnet Freeman that um, can support constant degree polynomials. And we ask whether it's possible now to, to have schemes for more than linear functions that are proven secure in the standard model. So that's um, one of our main contributions. So we, uh, in this work, we propose the first homomorphic signature uh, proven secure in the standard model for functions more, than, um, more expressive than linear functions. In particular, um, we support multivariate polynomials um, of bounded degree. So our scheme is proven fully adaptive secure. So this is in contrast to the scheme by Bonnet Freeman that was proven in a, um, in a model where the adversary had to query the messages in a data set all at once. So in contrast, in our case, we can tolerate fully adaptive queries. And finally, we introduce and uh, um, realize a notion of efficient verification for homomorphic signatures. So this um, says that if you want to verify with respect to a program P, you can do it more efficiently than running P. And this works in the preprocessing model. And uh, the nice thing about this property is that this opens the way to using uh, homomorphic signatures for um, verifiable delegation of computation. Okay, so our construction more in detail. So in, uh, um, our scheme is basically built in two steps. So first we show to go from weak to adaptive security in a generic way for homomorphic signatures supporting arithmetic circuits of degree K. And then we um, instantiate this generic construction by proposing a weakly secure homomorphic signature um, that in the standard model, and this is based on uh, um, 2K linear maps for arithmetic circuits of degree K. So in the, in the next part of the talk, I will first describe this generic construction, then I'll move to the uh, weekly secure scheme. Um, so first of all, let me mention that uh, one of the motivation of having such a transformation is that if you want to use known transformations for going to, from weak to adaptive security for uh, more fixed signatures, the one we know for regular signature schemes do not work. And the reason is that if, for example, you want to use chameleon hash functions, this may completely destroy the homomorphic property of the scheme. So um, our technique instead relies on the um, following idea. So assume that you want to sign a message M. So what you do is to uh, make a secret sharing of M by um, picking a random polynomial of degree one that evaluates on the message in the point zero. And then you create uh, basically K plus one shares of, um, of this message by evaluating the polynomial in K plus one distinct points. And then what you do is to sign each of these shares separately with a, uh, an ist a different instance of the weekly homomorphic scheme. So the first share is signed with respect to secret key SK1, the second with secret key SK2, and so on. And now assume that you do this for all the, uh, the messages in the, uh, in the data set, and you want to uh, perform the homomorphic evaluation. So what you can do is to apply this polynomial of um, um, 
to on the shares component wise, you will obtain other shares. And now to validate the correctness of these shares, we can uh, apply the evaluation algorithm of the, um, of the weekly secure scheme in order to get signatures on this. And this basically provides a way to verify, which is uh, you uh, verify that each of these shares is correct uh, by using the corresponding public key, and then you reconstruct a polynomial via interpolation, and you check that on the point zero, you re reconstruct the message. So how does this uh, technique help with the security proof? So the, um, the idea is that we want to show that any adversary that breaks adaptive unforgeability can be used to break the weak unforgeability of the uh, weekly secure scheme. And recall that in the weekly uh, secure scheme, we have to, in this weak unforgeability game, we have to declare all the messages in advance. So this is what our simulator does. So it declares random messages at the beginning. It gets back a public key and corresponding signatures. And now what it does is to program the public key of the adaptive secure scheme by um, selecting all the, um, all the um, key pairs of the all instances um, by generating them, except for one instance, or one of these schemes in which it plugs the public key from the weak convergeability game. So this is a typical all but one um, simulation. And uh, uh, this, once this public key is given to the adversary, we'll start making queries. And this can be answered by uh, performing the secret sharing of the message in a slightly different way. In particular, now the polynomial that um, you use for the secret sharing is, uh, is taken in such a way that you uh, program it on the point J to be one of the messages that, you, uh, that, that the simulator uh, declared at the beginning of the game. And then you can simulate signatures because the simulator knows all the secret key. And for the scheme in which it, it, uh, for which it doesn't know the secret key, in can use the, the signature from the uh, weak unforgeability game. Um, so this is how assigning queries are um, simulated. So and uh, when the adversary comes up with the forgery, now what um, we can do is to um, the idea is that if this is really a forgery, meaning that M star is not correct, then at least one of these shares is not correct, and this means that uh, there is a forgery on the J scheme. So this uh, basically provides a way out to go from weak to adaptive security for, um, um, uh, for homomorphic signatures. And um, so in the next part of the talk, I will describe how we can, we can instantiate these uh, homomorphic signature schemes in the standard model. And this is based on um, uh, 2K linear maps. So here is um, the basic idea of the scheme. So I will uh, describe this, a toy version of our scheme. Um, and that works only for a single data set, and then I will give you what are the ideas to extend it to multiple data sets. So the, um, the public key of the scheme is, the, is, um, is defined by um, a generator of the level one group together with encodings of random uh, exponents x and b. And also there is some additional um, uh, group elements that will be used to bind messages with positions, uh, roughly speaking. So ri will be used to sign the message uh, for position i. Um, so a signature for a message at position i is, a, um, is basically an encoding and exponent of a polynomial of this form. So it's um, this randomness that depends on the message minus, uh, that sort of depends on the label, minus the, uh, the message times uh, x and this, expo this secret exponent b. Um, so it's, if this is the form of the signatures, um, it's easy to see that we get um, um, homomorphicity with respect to additions. So the basically, if you perform additions, the signature will stay in this nice form. So randomness minus message times secret. Um, the tricky part is to deal with multiplications. And the, um, so the basic idea is that we would like to use the bilinear map to get uh, the multiplication in the exponent of these two um, polynomials. But the problem is that um, this can be problematic for, for verification. And the reason is that you, in order to verify now the signature, um, where there is this, um, we get this polynomial of degree two with this cross term, uh, you need to know either you need to know the signatures uh, of the on the original messages, which is not allowed, or you have to keep track of these cross terms. And this can, can grow at every multiplication. So ideally, what you would like to, uh, to do is to find a way to clean up the signature and keep it in the nice form. So randomness minus message times secret key. Um, and uh, the observation is that this is, would be actually possible if you had um, this uh, value g1 to the bx in the public key, 
Uh, but um, because basically, I mean, I, I won't go into the details, but there is a way to recompute this cross term and remove it after every application of the bilinear map. But uh, the problem is that if you give out this in the public, then um, the security of the scheme breaks down. Uh, and this is uh, clear because basically the, the, the signature becomes malleable. So our idea is then to um, publish a randomized version of this uh, G1 to the BX. Uh, and this is randomized by an additional exponent A. And uh, we also uh, add other um, uh, material related to A in the, uh, in the public key. And, um, and this basically allows to now to clean up the signature after, doing, after applying the bilinear map. Basically, you, we can recompute the cross term and we can um, remove it uh, after every multiplication. And this allows to keep the signature in, the, um, in this nice form. Um, and also what we show is that publishing this value would preserve security. Um, so it's also worth noting that this, um, in this way also the, uh, there is a, a sort of uh, key switch at every level in the sense that the form of the secret key under which the, um, the signatures are created is going to change it uh, after every multiplication. In particular, we will get some uh, key that depends on the, uh, on the degree of the polynomial. Um, so in, in general, every signature uh, in this scheme that is obtained by applying a polynomial uh, P of degree D uh, will have this form. So it's an encoding at level D of uh, the polynomial applied on the label-dependent randomness minus the polynomial applied on the original messages, which is the output of, um, of the computation, times uh, this um, level-dependent secret key. And, um, and also, I didn't talk because, I mean, there is no uh, enough time, but there is also a twin version of this scheme with an additional uh, um, exponent A. Um, and the idea is that if signatures have this form, now we, we can use the bilinear maps in order to check this. Um, and uh, I want to observe that for verification, we have to uh, compute this uh, polynomial over the R values, and uh, uh, this will be important to uh, understand how we can get the efficient verification. So that's the, um, the toy scheme. So the um, security of this scheme is proven uh, under this uh, new assumption that we propose in multilinear groups. So it's, uh, um, in its, the assumption, roughly speaking, says that um, if you give um, encodings at level one of this uh, random A, B, X in the form as in the public key of the toy scheme, it's hard to come up with an encoding at level K of uh, A to the power K minus one, B to the K, X to the K. Uh, and we proved this to be uh, um, hard in the generic multilinear group model. We can also test using the tool presented yesterday. And uh, it's also worth noting that um, we, uh, we can also directly prove the adaptive security of this scheme under an interactive assumption. This just gives, I mean, it's a, um, a good intuition that the scheme is not vulnerable uh, to, um, um, in, in the adaptive case, but it's more a matter of uh, getting a, a security proof under a reasonable assumption. Um, so what's the idea to go from the, um, this toy scheme to a fully fledged homomorphic signature? So the idea is that we generate one instance of the toy scheme for every data set, and some of the, um, the parameters we are going to be shared among all instances to, uh, to get efficient public keys. Um, for efficient verification, basically the idea is that if you want to verify the same program P on, uh, main, on multiple data sets, this um, verification is going to use the same value P of R. And this, if you pre-compute it once, you can use it to verify as many times as you want. And finally, a final note is that um, if you want to instantiate the scheme using graded encodings, this requires some changes due to the discrepancy between uh, graded encodings and uh, ideal uh, multilinear maps. For example, we have to uh, work with messages over the integers because the, the plain text space of the graded encodings is not public. So to conclude, uh, so the main contribution of, our, of this work was to propose the first homomorphic signature in the standard model. And, um, our scheme supports multivariate polynomials of bounded degree, and it's fully adaptive, secure, and also this uh, new property of efficient verification. 
And um, there, is, there are also some uh, independent recent work that appeared on ePrint in the last two months where um, uh, Weeks and uh, Gorbun of Vaikuntandl showed how to obtain weakly secure amorphic signatures for uh, circuits of bounded polynomial depth, and they are based on um, standard assumptions. Of